Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Dr. Tim Adair, and uh, tonight is the first episode of a podcast series called Got Paid. And uh, I'm one of the two doctors who will be co hosting this. And the other doctor and I came up with this idea. Everybody on the planet now has got a podcast and a, uh, a radio show and all those things. And we didn't want to do another one of those to kind of tell just what we do uh, individually over and over and over. But we wanted to do a collaboration where we could help people, we could help patients that were having all kinds of different uh, pain disorders, whether that was structural pain, uh, headaches, sciatica, back pain, knee pain, or they were having uh, pain from like uh, organ things like uh, fermentation in the gut or fatigue, uh, all type of visceral related disorders or stress and anxiety and emotional pains. And really we didn't see anybody who was doing all of that because no one doctor knows the solution to all that. And, and let, let me say transparently, uh, especially me. And so uh, there's no way I can address uh, all of those sides of the triangle. So uh, I, I have collaborated with another doctor and I'm excited to be, uh, begin this new journey we've got many, many, many health topics and we want to share my background. I've been a practicing chiropractor for 26 years and, uh, and I've got some other uh, certifications where uh, I've continued my education to help my patients with different things. But, but in my training and also in my scope of practice, legally by my state license, I, I'm not allowed to do any type of counseling or behavioral or mental health uh, treatment. One, because it, I don't have much training in that background, but very clearly, two, is because the state just does not want us to do that. And so uh, if, if truly mental health is a, is a big part of people's health, then certainly somebody with just my background is not going to be the end all total resource. And so there's a need. And uh, after being in practice for many years and working with uh, all walks of life from people with all different jobs and athletes, uh, certainly I have seen stress and emotional stress and mental health as a huge part of what affects somebody's total health. But in the 26 years I've been in practice, nothing escalated the need for the solution to the problems people were having in that arena, like, like COVID and the outlying things that, that, that go with COVID. And so all the isolation and the, um, just a huge change of our lifestyles, not to mention people getting sick with the disease itself and our loved ones. Uh, COVID really, 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 really changed how we, how we saw patients coming in and their needs. And so um, uh, we have a little paradigm and this is, this is how you find health. And I'm sure this is true. And we're gonna to try to get as close to this as we possibly can. Uh, Laura, would you bring up the triangle slide for me, please? So what we say is health is caught in a triangle. And so a triangle, as we all know, has, has three sides to the triangle. And one side is not particularly uh, more important than the other side of the triangle, but, but I'm a chiropractor. So we always talk on the bottom of this, you'll see the, uh, the structural component of, of the triangle. So if I have somebody that has a tremendously injured low back and they can't stand up straight, and they have numbness and tingling in their leg, it doesn't matter how good a vitamin C I give them or how much great referral to a fantastic counselor I give them. If they can't sit, they can't sleep, they can't walk, they can't, we've got to get their structure back to get them healthy. Now, if we have a person who say has got such a issue with insomnia and their, their, neurochem their uh, uh, neurotransmitters are so completely out of whack that they can't sleep and they can't rest and they're going on four or five hours of sleep and a bunch of caffeine, I can give them the best adjustment, fix their tingling leg, but I can't, I can't get them well if they're getting four or five hours sleep. So I need to address maybe their GABA neurotransmitter levels or maybe melatonin, or maybe we're gonna talk about something tonight called cortisol that causes insomnia. And I have to fix that too. And, and we have a lot of training and we have a lot of uh, opportunity to do those two things in practice. I see lots of that, but, but people in my background don't really 
address the emotional side of the equation. So as good as we can do at the structure and the chemistry, if we have somebody who's, who's riddled with anxiety or they've got clinical depression or we've got some major emotional uh, grief issue with loss or, or whatever that emotional issue is, we're not going to achieve health because it takes all sides of the triangle. And I don't believe there's a doctor out there that treats all three sides. So what we need is a collaboration between our structural experts, our chemistry experts, and our emotional experts. So when, when I go looking for, well, who knows more about this emotional side of the triangle that I definitely don't know about, who, who would I look into? And so when we look at this and we're doing, uh, we're doing the research, it, it doesn't take long to get to a mental health professional that stands out kind of above the crowd. And uh, this gentleman has published, I believe, four books, uh, New York uh, a bestseller. And uh, Dr. Lloyd has not only come up with a evolution of some of the mental health technologies, but really a revolution. And when you look at, uh, when you look at what this gentleman has done, Look at this slide. He's treating people from all 50 states, which is which is more than I am. 184 countries. I didn't really know there was 184 countries. Uh, he's got books published in 30 languages. He's got the largest emotional well-being practice in the world. Okay, number one bestseller in seven countries. So I, I found my guy. Now he, here's the thing. This gentleman, when you when you sit down and you look at uh, uh, what he's doing, you go now. How does somebody amass this type of thing? And how did he get to where he's going? Here's what's really amazing. If you guys look in the, the bottom of this slide over in the right corner, it says that he's got 42, I believe, double blind studies. L let, me, let me tell you a little bit about that. I hope he doesn't shoot me when I tell you guys this. So we were talking almost a year ago. We were thinking about doing a collaboration and bringing my expertise and his expertise together for the betterment of trying to get fit that whole three sides of the triangle fixed so that we could get people well. When we were talking about doing this, Dr. Lloyd told me that uh, he ended up on some website or whatever, and it was called, uh, he'll, he'll clean it up here in a second. I think it was like Quack Watch or, or, or something like that. So the biggest quack doctor apparently gets a score of 100. And I think they scored Dr. Lloyd 98. And, and I don't think anybody in their right mind would want to end up on that list. But what Dr. Lloyd does is so revolutionary that nobody understood it. So they thought, well, it must be some quackery. So he goes on this website, and I'm sure at the time, and, and we'll let him tell us, but I'm almost positive he'll tell us that could not have been a blessing at first to end up on that website. But he, because he ends up on that website, there was a university that decided to study his, his technique to disprove it. And when they studied it to disprove it and they used heart rate variability and all these gold standard uh, laboratory methods to test a therapy, not only did they not disprove it, they absolutely proved it. So the study was repeated by another university and another university and $30 million worth of research later, which he could have never afforded on his own, his technique has been proven and proven again and proven again. And so I found a guy that can fix the third side of the triangle, and we sure hope that we can help you with the other sides of the triangle. So uh, at this time, I'd like to bring Dr. Lloyd and introduce you guys. Uh, uh, please welcome Dr. Alex Lloyd. Laura, if you could go to the split screen, please. For you guys, our first dance, we're getting there. There we go. Hey, Dr. Alex, how you doing, way, man? I got my glasses. Sorry. No, I look better if you leave them off. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much, Tim. And, um, and this is not a deal where Tim is introducing me and I'm the star of the show. We're doing this together, all right? Uh, I need him, and and by some miracle, he felt like he needed me. But let me tell you, let me tell you, being I, I was actually number two 
in the world on their quack watch. Number two. Oh, I, I gave you had, too much credit. I had you at number one. I'm sorry. They had hundreds of people and I was number two on their quack watch. And um, I actually did an interview with them and the doctor, um, the doctor was interviewing me. He was an atheist and, and very, uh, very uh, kind of cold and just the facts and nothing else and all that sort of thing. But anyway, his entire point, his only point as to why I was a quack is because we did not have double blind studies. That was it. He said that is proof in today's world. It's been proof for the last 50 years. If you have them, it's validated. If you don't have them, it's not validated. You don't have them. So we cannot have any confidence in this. Okay. And, and you know, he may have had a point then because we didn't have double blind studies. Although everything that has ever been proven by double blind studies was not proven before they did the double blind study. All right. Sure. So, so in a sense, you know, anything in the world could be proven true by double blind studies, but maybe they haven't done them yet like mine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, now they have. Well, a very interesting thing is after the 18, and it's not, it, it's, it's uh, 18 double blind studies on 42 life issues that they studied in those 18 studies. Okay. okay. But, but um, the, the fascinating thing for me was none of those people, and there were more websites that besides that one, that uh, these people are basically, basically professional skeptics. And guess what? When, when our double blind studies came out, proving that what we'd been saying all along was true, not a single one of them apologized. Not a single one of them yeah reported that, okay, now they do have double blind studies. So we were wrong about this. No, they never do that. They never apologize. They never say they're wrong, but that's not why we're here. That's not why we're here. Okay. Um, so about a year ago, I realized that even though my practice had, had gone better than I had ever imagined, I had a huge hole. And it was the physical and structural, okay? I've had so many clients over the years who were depressed or had anxiety or bipolar or, you know, some problem. And mine was sort of the opposite of Dr. Adair's. I'm going to call him Dr. Tim. I've never called him Dr. Adair, Dr. Tim. But um, it, it, anyway, the, the crazy thing is that even though even though I'd been way more uh, successful than I'd ever imagined, I had a hole in my practice. I, I've had people come into me for, tw uh, it'll be um, 22 years this April 15th since I started this, okay? And for 22 years, I've had people coming to me who had structural or chemical issues that were so bad that they couldn't even hardly do what I told them to do that would have relieved the, the emotional issues because they were in so much pain, okay? So um, what you need to know about me is that when I first started this, I built my whole practice through chiropractors, mm -hmm. okay? I started working with Dr. Tim 25, 26 years ago. We worked together for like three or four years, okay? Mm -hmm. And and I worked with a number of other chiropractors, okay? So in a, in a pretty short period of time, I had about 40 chiropractors referring patients to me because of what Tim said. Legally, they couldn't deal with mental mm -hmm. and emotional issues and they didn't feel like they had the expertise to sure. and they didn't want to because it would get them off schedule and, and, and all that sort of thing, all right? So kind of after 22 years, I decided, good grief, I'm tired of this. I wanna fix this hole in what I do and be able to help anyone who comes to me in pain, all right? 
And even though I worked with like 40 different chiropractors and, and, and they're the top chiropractors in the world, uh, Dr. Josh Adams is, is probably the most famous chiropractor in the world right now today. You see him on television all the time, okay? Well, when he was starting his chiropractic office, he came to me and asked me for help starting his business. And, and I was happy to help him. And we did several joint programs together. I did a thing with my following and uh, that helped him get going. I gave him some advice. He later did some things for me when he was way mm -hmm. bigger than me. And he's way bigger than me today, all right? He's huge. He's one of the biggest guys in mm -hmm. the world. But he doesn't practice chiropractic today. He teaches and owns a company, a huge company that does all kinds of great stuff, but he doesn't practice that anymore, okay? Another top uh, chiropractor is Dr. John Brimhall. Mm -hmm. And probably 20 years ago, he was considered the top chiropractor <laughs> and the most popular and the most famous and all that. But he doesn't really practice anymore. He teaches other chiropractors. He puts together programs. He has a nutritional company he's really involved with, but he doesn't really do chiropractic anymore. Dr. Lou Oberstadt was the head of the Tennessee Board of Chiropractors here in Tennessee where mm -hmm. I live, all right? But he's retired now, okay? And, and he wouldn't have been my first choice anyway, not because he doesn't do great work, he always did. But mm -hmm. when I decided I wanted to do this and have a place where anyone in pain could come and get help, real help, practical, right now help, okay? I was going to do it with one person or I was not going to do it. And that was Tim Adair, all right? Mm -hmm. And let me tell you the reason for that. Let me tell you the reason for that. There's an expression for... Um, and, and, and it's sort of a, it maybe even is a little bit of a disrespectful uh, expression about chiropractors. And it's, and here's what it is. Rack them and crack them. That's the phrase. Alex, you have to stack them before you rack them and crack them. Okay, stack them, rack them and crack them. Okay. And, and, and that's what most chiropractors over the last 50, 60 yeah. years have mm -hmm. done. You go in and They'll take like five, six minutes, crack, 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 crack. Thanks a lot. See you next week. And that's and that's pretty much it. And it and, and it helps and you feel better and you leave, okay? And you come back next week. But most of those people are seeing a chiropractor for 30 years every week, all right? Dr. Tim is different from all of them. And I observed it over years firsthand. Here's what Dr. Tim does. People go in and it's not rack them, crack them. It's, it's now he does that too, but it's, they're not in there for five or six minutes. They're usually in there for 10, 15 or 20 minutes. And they tend to go in um, limping and with a pained look on their face. And I've seen this of hundreds of people. And 10, 15, 20 minutes later, they come out the same door smiling without a limp. And, and a great many of them, after so many weeks of that, they don't have to come back every week. They're better. They're literally better now from that. Okay. Well, very few in that entire profession operate that way. And Dr. Tim does for one reason, well, no, two reasons, two reasons. He sees every single patient as a challenge where a lot of chiropractors, by the time they've been in practice 25 years like Dr. Tim, they don't see them as a challenge, they're burned out. They're, they can't wait till the end of the day and the end of the week. That's what they're looking forward to, okay? Not Tim. Every patient is a challenge to him. And number two, he honestly cares about every single person. And I've seen it, okay? One of the psychologists who I did part of my doctoral internship with, his name is Dr. Robert Sturgeon. He was the head of 
He was the head of the psych department at a very prestigious local university, okay? Now he's very, very old and in, and in, uh, has a lot of pain in his body and, and stuff like that. I'll tell you, he will go into Dr. Tim frowning in pain, can hardly walk, and he will come out with a smile on his face, walking normally, all right? And, and the bigger deal than that is that when Dr. Tim talks to me over lunch or just a casual phone conversation, he's talking about his patients and how he can help them and how it hurts him that they're in pain. And he, he, he's un uncovering every rock to solve their problem. And he does, all right? Uh, Laura, if you can bring up the, the Dr. Tim slide. I, and, and by the way, um, we're gonna do this program for a while and you're not gonna hear this repeated, okay? This is the first time we've ever done this. We're not gonna be doing this over and over and over. But you can see right here, uh, Dr. Tim won the prestigious doctor's award. This, ladies and gentlemen, most of these awards, they're given every year, okay? And typically every year they're trying to find another person who might be worthy because they are committed to giving the award every year. And so they may give it to someone who really do, doesn't even do that great a job but all the other great ones have already gotten the award, blah, 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 blah. Okay, this award was given two times in 23 years and they gave it to him. And, and the reason is the same reason I wanted him for this program and I was either gonna do it with him or I was not gonna do it at all. He graduated from Belmont University. That's a very prestigious university, almost like an Ivy League. Um, university. I've known so many people that went to Belmont and flunked out. I know, I knew, I know of another one that flunked out just this last semester from Belmont. Uh, it's just a very, very difficult school. Uh, he's been the profession. He's been the sports team doctor for a number of different teams. In, in fact. He's referred a bunch of, of those people to me to help them with emotional issues. One of the top wrestling federations in the world that's on that, you know, you, you see on TV several times every single week, you know, with those guys that are 6'6 and have muscles on top of muscles and all that kind of stuff. Okay. He was their man. I mean, he was the guy that kept them all where they could do their thing as well as some other professional teams too, okay? Let me tell you, those professional sports teams, they don't mess around, okay? They can't afford to. It costs them millions of dollars. They've got to have somebody who is fabulous at what they do, and, and that's why they got him, okay? So uh, if you can go back to the split screen, um, Laura, I'm going to share just a couple of things here about why we're here and then we'll get to some practical stuff. I'm gonna share with you in a few minutes a procedure that takes about a minute and a half to do and will lower your stress about 50% in a minute and a half, anytime, anywhere you need it. I'm gonna teach you that in just a few minutes for free right now tonight on this program. So if you wanna reduce your stress tonight before you go to bed by 50% or more, Hang on for a few minutes and I'm going to show you how, okay? All right. When I was thinking about this first um, segment of this program, uh, I had a few thoughts and I want to share these and I want to share them real quickly so that we can get to the stuff that's more important. Um, every In every one of these programs, we're going to try to teach you two things. Number one, something you did not know and can practically use to increase your mental and emotional health. And number two, something you can practically do today to increase your structural and chemistry health, okay? And we're gonna do that on every segment, including this one tonight, okay? All of these calls are gonna be posted. You can access them at any time. They'll be labeled like um, uh, this one is, is gonna focus on stress. 
All right. So if you miss one or if you have a friend that has a problem and that and, and they've not seen that particular episode, they can just go right to where they're posted, find the one for stress or knee pain or anxiety or um, shoulder pain or whatever and watch it and, and find the two things from that program to practically apply to help their situation. Okay, so we're going to try to do that every single week. Uh, we really want to build a lifetime library of physical, chemical, and emotional fixes for any and every issue that would fall under those. Okay, so let me share a couple of things and a couple of statistics about why we're here. Is that okay with you, Tim? Uh, great. Go ahead. Okay. All right. I believe we're here for three things. And I've got some notes here to keep me on track, all right? But I believe we're here basically for three things. Number one, to save you a bunch of money. Yeah, you heard me right. We're here to save you a bunch of money. Maybe you did not know the number one cause of bankruptcy in the United States of America, 64% of all bankruptcies. <laughs> medical health expense, primarily mainstream Western medical expense. 64% of all bankruptcies and a very high percentage of people going from wealthy or middle class to poverty, even if they don't go bankrupt. So number one, we're here to save you a bunch of money. Number two, we're here to help you eliminate the thing that is stealing one third of your healthy lifespan, okay? I have a good friend who is one of the top geneticist medical doctors in the world. And he told me that our mind body chemistry structure is built and designed to live to about 120 years old healthy. It is stress that is reducing that down to an average of about 80 years old and more health issues than we have ever had in the history of mankind, all right? Mm -hmm. Stress is what's doing that. So you, you probably didn't know that, but you're losing a third of your healthy lifespan. We want to give you that back, okay? We want you to live to 90, 100, and be healthy that the great majority of that time. And, and that is not just pie in the sky stuff. The research says you should be able to do that if you will just get your stress down, okay? So that's number two. Number one, save you a bunch of money. Number two, give you a third of your life back. Number three, to give you ways, practical, quick ways to eliminate the number one complaint problem of people all over the world, every country, every language, every ethnicity. What is that? You know the answer. Pain. Physical, emotional, structural, relational, spiritual pain. Well, we believe. Now, we may be out to lunch, man. We may be insane, but we believe. We have proven, unique to us, practical solutions to eliminate virtually any kind of pain quickly at a very low cost, if not free, and to heal it, not long term, not just manage it, okay? But we need both of us for that. Because he, he's an expert in areas that I'm not, and I'm an expert in areas that he's not, but together we've, we're experts in all of it. And not only experts, but we've had both of us over 25 years, high level experience doing it. And let me tell you, there's a reason you've heard that expression. And, and I hate to even say it because I love teachers, okay? But there's an expression, okay? Um, teachers teach because they can't do. Doers do and teach at the same time, all right? 
if you were to if you were to be a fly on the wall when a patient comes in to see Dr. Adair, the moment they walk into his office, he starts teaching. He's talking the entire time he's working on them. And so am I with a client, all right? Because you have to change some of your mindset too for these things, okay? Uh, so, okay, those are the three things. So uh, Alex, let me jump in here. Yeah, and let, yeah, let me, yeah no, and, and perfect. I want to uh, piggyback on what you were saying. You know, and I think we talked about this. If you look up the word doctor in Webster's, do you know, do you know the definition? No, what is it? I mean, it doesn't say treats patients. It doesn't say clinician. It teacher. says teacher. Teacher. Yes, that's right. So, so yeah, if, so instead of catching you a fish, let's teach you how to fish. And I know you're going to go through a technique that's going to help people with the stress management tool. I'm going to leave them with a checklist. And so that'll kind of be our pattern going forward. So whatever our topic is, I'm going to, uh, so let's go back to, you know, if it's not you that needs this information, but somebody you love that needs this information, we'll archive this and you can go back. Matter of fact, if you haven't met that person yet and you get on match.com and then you meet them and find out that they're perfect, except they're stressed out, then you make them watch this and we'll, I'm kidding. We'll, we'll give them a checklist to help them identify if they're having a chemical stress issue that I can help with. And then we got, we're got we gonna have Dr. Alex's technique to help with the mental emotional. So Alex, I'm gonna tell a little story on you from 22 or so years ago. Oh, so no. I was a team doctor for pro wrestling for over a dozen years. And so I'd get these guys back on TV three times a week uh, with, uh, with uh, what they were trying to compete with and do. And so I had some victories and we'd get them over injuries, this and that. But I always got upstaged by Alex. I would get them back in the ring and I'd cut their six week suspension down to 10 days and we'd get them back wrestling and earning and, and building their careers. And then I'd send them across the hallway. Alex would get them off of their addiction issue and they would leave him completely free of being a hostage to narcotics. And so uh, do you remember a few of those, Alex? Yeah, I do. One yeah. of them about killed me. Um, uh, <laughs> my family, he was, uh, he, he was addicted and Vince McMahon, the head of WWE, had just called him into his office and he said, you've got two strikes for drug addiction. If you get three, you're out. And, and you got to picture this. This guy's like six, six muscles on top of muscles. In yeah. fact, in fact, when he was, when I was in the office with him, he held out his arm like this and he said, jump on my arm. <laughs> and I thought that's the weirdest thing I've ever heard anybody say. Why would you tell me that? And he said, no, I'm serious. Jump on my arm. Cause you know, it was way up high for me cause he's six, six, but I thought, well, okay. So I jumped on his arm. So I'm completely off the ground, okay? Nothing but on his arm. Let me tell you something. His mm -hmm. arm did not go down one inch. He held me there for two or three minutes and his arm never went down, okay? And this man is weeping in my office yeah. and he said, you don't understand, Dr. Lloyd. He said, I've either got action figures at Walmart or I work at Walmart. I didn't even graduate from high school. And, and he said, this is my whole life we're talking about. He said, I've done inpatient. I've, I've tried everything and I'm still addicted. Can you help me? 24 hours later, he left and was addiction free. And he never even went through withdrawal, which is impossible. And about... Uh, Eight or 10 months later, my family and I went to Orlando on vacation and um, and they were doing a, uh, uh, a TV thing at Universal Studios in Orlando. I was there. And they, yeah, I didn't even know you were there. And they invited me to come and this guy sees me coming and my family's with me and he runs up to me as fast as he can, grabs me pulls me up in the air. I thought he was going to break my back. I really did. It was unbelievable. And he literally kissed me on the cheek and said, I'm, I've been clean ever since we met. 
And, you know, it, so anyway. So Alex, let me tell you something. Yeah. That story is more uh, impactful than you realize because even though he had stayed clean, he had not stayed uninjured. And so yeah. even with multiple, multiple injuries in that eight or nine months, these guys don't go two weeks in a row without getting hurt. Uh, even with multiple injuries, he had stayed clean. So that's more phenomenal than you, than you know. Yeah, right. Okay, okay. Let me, let me share a couple of things. And again, we're not going to share this every time. This is the first segment, all right? And we, and we need to lay the groundwork. But you probably need what we're talking about way more than you maybe even know you do, okay? And let me share why. All right, and I'm going to go through this really, really fast. This is, this is from um, multiple studies. One of the main ones was called Stress in America 2020, a national mental health crisis. And here's what they found. 77% of people in the world today, you hear that number? 77% have stress to the degree that it is negatively affecting their physical health and the majority of them don't even know where it's coming from. And it's coming from the stress, all right? 33% of all people in the world today have such extreme stress that they can't even function day to day. One out of three. 48% have stress to the degree that they have trouble sleeping and that lack of sleep is affecting their physical health. Mm -hmm. Center for Disease Control says that 90% of all illness and disease come from stress. Stanford University says 95%. Dr. Bruce Lipton, who used to be a cellular biologist at Stanford mm -hmm. Medical School, says it's basically 100%. Um, and I'm almost done. Um, oh, yeah. In the 1950s, you want to guess how many people were stressed, at least to the same degree that the 77% are stressed today? 10%. 10. 10%. Today, it's 77%. More than two out of every three people, three out of every four people are stressed today to the degree that it's significantly affecting their life. And this is the last one, Tim, and you were talking about COVID. The 77%, that was from a study from 2020, right before COVID. You want to know what it is after COVID? It's increased by 49.6% since COVID. So it was 77% of all people before COVID. That's increased by 49% today because and after COVID to the well, Alex, I would say this, not only just the percentage increase, but I would say that the age that the symptom happens has, it has decreased. And so I yes. have seen so many younger and younger and younger patients having more stress and anxiety. Like now it's an epidemic in the teenage population. Uh, have you, have you seen that as well? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, uh, I saw a new study that just came out last week. This one will blow your socks. Okay. This just came out last week. Here's what they found. The average teenager today measures exactly the same on the stress level as a person from the 1950s who was who was in an inpatient insane mm -hmm. asylum. So if, if today's teenagers had been living in the 1950s with their same stress level that they have today, they would be put away, as they used to say in the 1950s, into an inpatient insane asylum against their will if, if needed. So. Oh my goodness, Tim! Is it gone way down in age? It, it's affecting. Well, Alex, that's a perfect. That's a perfect lead in. Can I get to the 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 whys of why everybody's so stressed out? Yes, go for it. Yeah, and, and I want to do the chemistry if you'll allow me, and then I want to switch yeah. it over. And, and because I think what you're going to have to share is going to be hugely impactful, I want to kind of uh, lead into that. But, but ladies and gentlemen, 
So, so here's what I see every single day in practice. And then, uh, and then I want you guys to try to relate to this in your own lives. So what we talk about is we talk about stress as being like a fight or flight response. So if I go out to my car tonight and Alex is hiding in the parking lot, and when I'm about to get in my car, I hear a chainsaw fire up and I look around the corner and I don't know it's Alex because he's got a ski mask on and a jumpsuit and he chases me around my office building with a chainsaw. I am going to run for my life. So when we're in fight or flight mode, we're secreting adrenaline. And that's really the chemical basis of this. When I am scared for my life, then my body has got to secrete adrenaline so that whether I'm tired or not, I can run and I can survive to endure another day. And so, so what we have is with people under chronic stress, we're running our adrenal gland down like a bank account. So we're making withdrawals and withdrawals and withdrawals and withdrawals. So we're gonna have a checklist at the end and I don't wanna get into that right now, but I'm gonna leave you guys with a checklist so you can assess yourself and your loved ones. But here's what causes adrenal fatigue. Now think about this. If I wake up today and I'm exhausted, I didn't get a good sleep last night, I got five and a half hours sleep instead of eight and a half hours sleep, I'm already in a deficiency, but I gotta go to work and I gotta do all these things today, no matter what my job is, I gotta get up and go, but I don't have enough of refreshment to do it. I have to tap in and I have to rob my adrenal glands a little bit of adrenaline to get it done, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, we talk with kids, and I don't know that we should stop the conversation with children. We talk about attention deficit disorder all the time. And this is a, a huge uh, in, input for what's causing adrenal fatigue with what our conscious choices are. So when we have a when we have a sixth or seventh or eighth grader who's not making the grades, and by the way, Alex, you probably know this, Tennessee, I think, I think is still the number one state on prescribing ADD and ADHD medication. We're number one out of 50 states. So uh, what they do typically is they will give Ritalin or they'll give Adderall. And this is more Alex expertise than mine, but those are amphetamines. And I want you to hear that word. Amphetamines in, in the last three letters, I-N-E. Caffeine ends in I -N nicotine cocaine, amphetamine, methamphetamine. If you can't wait to get to the coffee pot and get you a cup of coffee, it's because you need an INE. Yeah. And the reason you need an INE is because you don't have your own INE. So right. when, you're, when you're taking a withdrawal at the coffee pot, when you're taking a withdrawal with the uh, cigarette, when you're taking a withdrawal uh, with your uh, amphetamine or your diet pill, what you're doing is, is you're cashing a check and you're going shopping and you're having 45 minutes of fun and you're depleting your long-term savings more and more and more and you're drawing your adrenal account down. And when you go into insufficient funds, you will have an episode and your episode will be chronic fatigue, it will be some type of psychosis related to your lack of ability to focus. Uh, and, and so the things that your body secretes adrenaline for is when that guy with the chainsaw is chasing you, you have to have adrenaline to raise your heart rate, to get more blood flow to the muscles to run for your life. But you also have to take stored sugar to convert it to active sugar because those muscles need a fuel source to run for your life. So if we have a high carbohydrate diet, our body knows it can get rid of those carbohydrates if we secrete adrenaline. We have a high carb diet, we have high NEs, say high caffeine intake, high nicotine intake, we're depleting and depleting our adrenal glands, okay? If we have low sleep, also, your adrenal gland, one of the many jobs it does is it helps you to regulate your body temperature. So we're, we're in Tennessee where the weatherman uh, is probably the least credible guy uh, on the planet. And so we don't know if it's warm or cold or wet, but we've been through a few months of cold here. And so you ever notice, we always tell people that they burn calories. We don't tell them they slice calories or dice calories or freeze calories. We tell them they burn calories. Well, do you think you burn calories better in July or January? 
And so now that we're getting through with the winter, now we've got everybody who's saying, man, I gained 10, 15, 20, 25 pounds this winter because they're not burning because their adrenal glands not strong enough to keep their uh, exothermic regulation up to burn the calorie because they're fatigued from adrenal exhaustion. So we gain weight in the winter. That's another big symptom of, of, of adrenal fatigue, okay? Now, listen, we always, 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 we always secrete adrenaline in response to stress. If Alex comes after me with that chainsaw and I don't know it's him fooling around, I can't consciously say, you know what? I am not going to allow you to make me secrete adrenaline. It is an <laughs> involuntary response, and I have no choice. My body's going to immediately go into self-preservation mode, and I'm going to secrete adrenaline to the point of depletion if necessary. Now, here's the kicker. You secrete adrenaline when you're in fight or flight mode. And everything is a fight when you're exhausted. Let, let, me, let, me, let me do two scenarios. Alex is gonna like one of these, and he's gonna hate the other one. Let's say that I give Alex my credit card, and I said, you know what? I want you to go and take your beautiful wife and go on a one month vacation. And Done. anytime you need anything, I want you to just take my credit card and you buy what you need. And uh, when you get back, we'll sit down and talk about it. So when he gets back off that 30 day vacation and my butler brought him his sandwich, he, they got him his drink, they rubbed his feet, they put his sunscreen on his back. He absolutely got to rest and recuperate. He got to sleep in. He uh, didn't have to get up and have a cup of coffee. He got real repair. When I come over to his house and I say, you know, I wanna see the pictures from your vacation. But first of all, I want you to make me a sandwich. He's going to look at me and go, sure. Would you like mayonnaise or mustard? Okay. By the way, Alex, I'm a mustard guy. But, but here's the kicker. If I don't take Alex on that 30-day vacation, I say, you know what, bro? I, I need you to do something for me. I want you to do a research study on this. And I make him work 80 hours a week, four weeks in a row. And I come over to his house after that to find out what he found on the research study. And I say, Alex, I want you to make me a sandwich. He's going to go, are you kidding me? You make me do all this work and now you want me to make a sandwich. Let's be very clear. All I did in both, in both scenarios is I asked him, will you make me a sandwich? One of those, he wants to rip my head off and the other one, he wants to give me some mustard, okay? If you feel like every day at the end of the day, you're, you're burnt up, you're frazzled, you're exhausted, what do you mean? I got to do something else. You're probably just run out of adrenaline. And so what has to happen is you have to get a little irritated and you have to get a little agitated. Quite frankly, you have to want to fight to get in fight or flight mode to secrete some adrenaline to do a simple task because everything has to be a 911 emergency before you, before you can get it done. And this is what we see over and over and over with people in adrenal fatigue. So how many, how many people out of 10 do I see that are in some level of, of adrenal fatigue? About eight and a half. About eight and a half people out of 10. Now, why? Well, too much caffeine, too much carbohydrate, too much stimulation. Your nervous system has two parts. Go fight and rest and recover. Your go fight, your sympathetics, uh, should be balanced with your go rest and recover and sleep. If you're always fighting and you're never resting, you're getting more and more and more run down. We got cold temperature, so we, and, then ju and just stress, okay? So let's say that I'm sitting at the red light, having my triple espresso, eating my donut, after five and a half hours sleep, and I'm checking my email and texting my boss because I'm running late, because I'm stuck in traffic, and I got a project that I haven't done, and I got to get to work. How do you think my adrenals are doing? And I'll tell you what I'm seeing in practice, especially since COVID, more and more people are in that, in, in that mode. And here's, here's where it gets more complicated. Everything now is a fight because our population is so exhausted. We have to have it be a fight or we don't have enough energy to do it. And when you get in a fight, every fight of your life is gonna have two outcomes. The two outcomes of every single fight of your life is gonna be one, 
you win the fight, or two, you lose the fight. And if I, if I get in a fight, I need lots of adrenaline, so I'm superhuman strong, so I win. But if I lose the fight, and let's say I hurt my shoulder, I might have to go to the doctor and get a cortisone shot. And if I get a cortisone shot in my shoulder, then maybe from where I got hurt in the fight, I can get rid of that inflammation and I can get over it. So when I get in a fight, my body doesn't know if I'm going to win or if I'm going to, if I'm going to lose. So it's going to make my adrenaline and until I get depleted and it's going to make my own natural cortisone or cortisol in case I lose the fight. Well, so there's some things that we talk about and we're going to leave you guys with a checklist on cortisol tonight. And we're going to give you some uh, uh, more Alex than me is going to give you some techniques to deal with high cortisol. But I'm going to give you some chemistry that absolutely helps you with uh, uh, inhibiting cortisol so that you don't have uh, proliferation with that. Alex, are we good so far? Can I do the chemistry of rebuilding the adrenals? Yeah, real quick. Let me let yeah. me do the other. Let me let me tell them the other side really quick. Okay, so he just told you the structure and chemical side of stress. Stress has several names. He gave you one fight or flight. There's another one. See if you can say this five times fast. The hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Say that one, okay? Uh, it's also called the fear response, all right? Because it, it's only activated when we are in internal fear. It's supposed to happen once or twice a year, like when you're on interstate and a big truck is pulling over without looking. The latest research says it's happening eight to 20 times a day. To the average person, okay? We have devolved in the area of stress, okay? I already shared about uh, the Center for Disease Control and all these people saying- Hey, uh, Alex, can I interrupt you for a yeah, second? Yeah. You hold your thought. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, on the HIPAA, uh, I'm sorry, HIPAA, hi hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, the original HIPAA, uh, the HPA axis, how you know you're in that? If you go out in the bright sunshine and you have to have sunglasses, yeah. The reason you have to have sunglasses is your pupils will be dilated. What constricts your pupil to help you focus is adrenaline. If you don't have adrenaline, you can't focus your eyeball. So we always talk about attention deficit disorder as a brain thing. It's really a pupil thing, and it's really an adrenaline thing. So when you go out in the sunshine, if you start sneezing, you can't keep your eyes open when you sneeze. What's happened is your hypothalamus is telling your pituitary to tell your adrenal gland to get adrenaline to your pupil. If you can't get adrenaline to your pupil, your brain says, buy me 10 seconds. It's on the way. I'm so exhausted because you ate a donut at the red light while you were checking your email. I can't get it to you right now. So you sneeze two or three times and you close your eyes when you sneeze. That buys you 10 seconds and then you get the adrenaline there. So if you always go outside and you have to have sunglasses or you sneeze, you have failed in the HIPAA, HPAA, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. That's your real life way to know if you're where Alex just told you. I'm sorry, go ahead, Alex. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm almost done. Um, so we know stress is the cause of almost any disease you can get. Um, for a hundred years, medical doctors, when they diagnose people with a disease, cancer, diabetes, whatever, they would tell people, I'm sorry to tell you, you have, and then they would lay it on them. And after they recovered, they would typically say, okay, doc, how did I get that? The number one answer by far for the last hundred years from medical doctors is three words, we don't know. Southwestern University Medical School and Medical Center a few years ago did a study to determine what is causing it. Where does disease, where does cancer, diabetes, ALS, Parkinson's, whatever it is, where does it come from? And after they completed the study, they found it and they did a press conference. Dr. Eric Nessler was interviewed by the Dallas Morning News, and this was reprinted in newspapers all over the world. It was headline news at the time. And they said, we found it. We found the source of virtually 100% of illness and disease. 
and it's your memories. If you have a memory with anger in it, with fear, with low self-worth, with I can't do it, that sends a signal to the hypothalamus in your brain that Tim was talking about. And when it receives that signal internally, not from anything externally, it flips on stress, all right? You heal that memory and the hypothalamus no longer receives that signal. It turns stress off and maybe even turns success on. Okay, that's the emotional side. Go ahead, Tim, share your- okay. Yeah, so, so if we share, could- I'm gonna share a quick fix after Tim okay. shares his and then a permanent fix, both. Awesome. So, okay, so if we could, let's bring up the uh, uh, the uh, slide here. And uh, I want you to get the adrenal uh, fatigue slide. And while, while we're bringing this up, I want you guys, uh, I want you guys to just pay attention to me just for a second. I promise I'll get into this. He, he, these are things that you do if, uh, if you are, um, uh, got adrenal fatigue, we'll, we'll hit this. So your adrenal bank account is, is exactly that. It's something that gets deposits put into it and withdrawals taken out of it. And so uh, what, what I wanna share with you is two things. One of these you can do, and it gives you 50% of the success of this, you can do for free. The, the other, we're gonna share a resource with you. You gotta stop doing the things that withdraw more adrenaline than you're putting in. So we talked about INEs, we talked about sleep deprivation, we talked about too much ca uh, caffeine and carbohydrate. So we can go low carb diet, not keto, but smart keto. Uh, uh, maybe YouTube some of that smart keto. Uh, we want to drop uh, uh, the uh, INEs. We want to uh, make sure we're getting as much sleep as we can. Now, here's how you know you've got adrenal fatigue. And go to the checklist with me. No matter how much you sleep, you're exhausted first thing in the morning. On your day off, if you get more sleep, you're actually even worse. If you, and this is how I know that I'm getting fatigued. I'm maybe not grouchy in the morning. I'm pretty easy going, but I'm non-communicative. If I really, I've got a daughter and she is the blessing probably of my life. She's 19 years old. And if she watched 60 minutes, it'll take her three hours to tell me what's on it. And <laughs> early in the morning, if I'm exhausted, uh, I, I just like, hey, can you get to the point? Can, can you land the plane? Uh, and you, some of you guys are saying, well, she got that honest right now. Uh, if, if you feel like you're normal, like 11 to two, you're, you're Superman or Wonder Woman from 11 to two, you're normal. And then in the afternoon, you're exhausted again. And you think to yourself, I have got to go to bed. Uh, I've got to go to bed tonight uh, on time. Uh, but when you get to bedtime, you're so wired up, you can't sleep. And then the other things we notice, if you've got a lot of belly fat and neck fat, um, then you probably don't have enough adrenaline. And then we talked about attention span. If you just can't get your to-do list done, you're procrastinating, uh, probably in some level of adrenal fatigue. So what we do for this, <clears throat> Laura, can we put the adrenaline slide up? Yeah, and the next one, the adrenaline slide with the green bottle. Guess, uh, uh, just uh, there's a little supplement slide there. So remember we talked about the adrenal gland is <clears throat> don't withdraw more than you put back in. So when we're pushing ourselves, we're going on low sleep, we're doing too many INEs, too much caffeine, too much nicotine, uh, we're having more on our uh, plate than we could accomplish, we're making too many withdrawals. And we'll bring up the thing here in just a second. There it is. This is your deposits. And so what helps you rebuild the adrenal gland, uh, basically, is, is uh, three primary nutrients, Alex, is what we find in practice. Vitamin C is not ascorbic acid. Vitamin C has 200 cousins called bioflavonoids, and most of the best bioavailable bioflavonoids are actually not in like oranges or citrus, but we find we do better with different cousins in the mushroom family. So this has got those C's, it's got panathenic acid, which is more for emotional stress, 
and it's then it's got desiccated adrenal tissue uh, that uh, comes from a bovine source. So we're taking adrenals to help us have building blocks to fix our broke adrenals. So this, so this is the, the, not the nickels, dimes, and quarters that we deposit back into our adrenal bank account, but literally the, the 20s, 50s, and 100s that quickly. So we'll take a person in uh, eight to 12 weeks on this formula and grossly improve their adrenal gland, usually average about two to three pounds of weight loss per week with men, 50% uh, of that with women. I get women who are upset with that. I say yes, but we get to complain about our prostate glands later. So uh, uh, nothing's fair, right? But it helps both sexes rebuild the adrenal glands. So this is the good thing to do. And then we shared the bad thing to do. Now, Alex, do you want me to wait on cortisol or you want me to hit cortisol real quick? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, Laura, can we get the, uh, uh, let's go to the got cortisol, got high cortisol slide. It's real simple. Not, not this one, but the, uh, that's it. Okay, guys. So how do you know if you have high cortisol? Well, remember I said, when you're in fight or flight mode all the time, you're either going to win the fight or you're going to lose the fight. So cortisol is actually a primitive hormone for survival. And so how do you know you're secreting too much cortisol is you get a second chin or sometimes a third chin and between your ribs and your, and your belt, you gain belly fat and, and the dreaded love handles. So if you're gaining neck weight gain uh, and, and then you've also got abdominal weight gain, chances are it's because of, if you Google cortisol weight gain pattern, it's neck and abdomen. Now, another thing we see with cortisol is uh, cortisol doesn't, if a person has high cortisol, they'll fall asleep in the recliner in the living room at the end of the night because they're exhausted. And they'll have a power nap for two, two and a half, three hours, but they will not stay asleep. They'll be wide awake and they'll get up and go to bed and they can't sleep. So when we have people with high cortisol, will you give me the, the cortisol, uh, pro cortisol slide now, Laura? Thank you, dear. And so there's a formula that blocks cortisol. Now, Alex, I want to, uh, this would be a good transition into uh, you helping us with the techniques with this. Cortisol is actually keeps us awake in the middle of the night. So Alex has a nice cave and he and his lovely cave woman on their cave have a, a door and a deadbolt. So when he goes to bed at night, he locks his deadbolt. So he's not worried about a bear walking into his cave and eating him. So he sleeps really good because he's got a deadbolt in his cave. But the caveman didn't have a deadbolt because he didn't have a door to put the deadbolt on. So he couldn't go to sleep with both eyes closed because the bear would come in and eat him. So if, you, if your body's in fight or flight mode and you think the bear's going to come in and eat me, you won't sleep and repair because your body thinks that you're going to have to fight the bear. Okay. Now, what we're finding is people who have high cortisol, seniors who get CAT scans for dementia, and other related things, some of them also get treated by guys like me who are doing uh, adrenal repair. And when we give them cortisol inhibitors, what we find is there's a gap that they measure. Uh, let me get on screen here. Uh, there's a, that's okay. There's a gap between the brain and the skull. And, and as that gap gets bigger, it means your brain is atrophying. So when we give more and more steroids to the senior population, many times it will atrophy the brain. When you block cortisol, what we're finding is we get increases in cognitivity and mental acuity. And so you don't have to be very smart to run from, from the dinosaur. You just have to run. I don't need you to sit and ponder philosophical thoughts. I need you to run. But when there's no dinosaur and there's no stress, then we get to do some higher thinking and it's not such a physical, desperate fight for survival. So when we're going and churning and we have to get mad to make the sandwich with mayonnaise, we're secreting mustard. I'm sorry, mustard, always mustard, Alex. When we're secreting uh, the hormone to go, man, this guy wants me to do this too. I have to get irritated to do it. I'm not only secreting adrenaline, I'm secreting cortisol. And that makes my neck fat, gives me sleep apnea, makes me snore. It gives me belly fat. I'll get a high on hernia. I'll have uh, overweightedness, they have a higher potential for type two diabetes, and I'll have uh, 
insomnia, which is health robbing. So the main ingredient in this is phosphatidylserine and uh, there's phosphatidylcholine in there. That helps us block cortisol. And so we want your cortisol to be very low. And we have people chew this at bedtime. And what we find after as little as 10 days, we've got people that always wake up in the middle of the night to start sleeping through the night. And after they're only three or four weeks, we start seeing a reduction in their belly fat and they start taking links up in their belt. And so we get them to repair at night by blocking the stress hormone. And what this essentially does is makes you like Dr. Alex. It puts a deadbolt on your front door so that you can close your eyes and not worry about the bear and you get to rest and repair. And so that's the chemical way to block the stress hormone. Okay, so Alex, I'm gonna pitch it back to you. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, so let's look at the emotional side and, and, and we're gonna wrap this up quick. And, and again, we may not go this long in the other segments. This is the first one we had to lay some foundation. So I'm sorry this one is running a little bit longer. And also in every <coughs> segment, we're gonna have Q&A. So you can ask Dr. Tim anything you want to ask him about structural and chemical. You can ask me anything you want to ask me about mental, emotional, spiritual, okay? Uh, and we're going to do that tonight, even though we're running over, okay? But let's look at the emotional side of stress. The other name for the stress response, or one of them, is the fear response, right? Well, stress comes from fear. Now, you think, okay, well, that's external fear. No, it's internal. All right. Now, Tim is exactly right. If you have something happen like Tim chasing me with a chainsaw this time, all right, I don't have to try to go into fight or flight. I can't help but go into fight or flight. Mm -hmm. It'll save my life. I can't help it. I will run no matter what, just like he said. Okay. But it's not happening eight to 20 times a day because somebody's chasing me with a chainsaw. It's happening because I've got memories with unresolved anger and self-worth and sadness and something that happened with my mom, something that happened with my brother or sister, something that happened in high school or college or, or, or whatever. Um, that's where the emotional side is coming from, not the external, but the internal, okay? And that's what Southwestern found. It's tied to your memories. You've got to heal the memory. So I'm going to give you a quick fix and a permanent fix. All right. Here's the quick fix. All right. And, and this can change your life. Now, this doesn't heal stress, but anytime, anywhere, it'll bring it down for most people about 50% in a minute and a half. All right. So try this as soon as this program is over and see if I'm telling the truth or not. Okay, you ready? Um, there's, there's three things. Six, nine, 12. That's all you need to remember. Six, nine, 12. That's it. You take a breath in over <coughs> six seconds. And once you take that breath in, you hold it for nine seconds. And after holding it for nine seconds, you let it out slowly over 12 seconds, all right? That's a total of 27 seconds. Six in, hold for nine, release slowly over 12. 27 seconds. Do that three times in a row. And studies say it should lower your stress about 50% for an hour or two. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't permanently fix it, it's a quick fix, not a permanent fix, all right? But hey, man, having a quick mm -hmm. fix that can lower your stress by 50% in a minute and a half, anytime, anywhere, in any situation, with any person, for any reason, is that valuable or what? I mean, you can excuse yourself, go to the restroom, close the stall, do that in a minute and a half, come out with 50% or more less stress. Now, there's another way that you can do this, all right? The way that that works is it activates the vagus nerve on the left side of your neck. Well, it's on both sides, but, but the main is on the left side, 
all right? Your vagus nerve, when it's activated, the biggest nerve in the body. It goes through your heart, goes through your brain, goes through every organ you have, okay? When the vagus nerve is activated, it turns on your anti-stress system. It turns on your parasympathetic nervous system, all right? Which is, which is the brakes. It's the calm down and relax. Sympathetic is the fight or flight, run, perform, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing, okay? So 90 seconds and you'll reduce that. 50, for, for some people, it reduces like 90% in a minute and a half. All right, so try it. Now, there's another way you can do that. You know what it is? You drive to Minnesota and pay the Mayo Clinic about $20,000 and they will do a surgery where they implant an electronic device that activates your vagus nerve. That's all it does. Ping, ping, ping. That's all it does. But doing that activates the vagus nerve, which lowers your stress significantly, all right? Well, guess what? That, that surgery is supposed to last at least five years. So in five years, you'll need another 15, 20 grand. In another five years, another 15, 20 grand. Go do that if you want to, but the six, nine, 12, will do basically the same thing. And both of them are a quick fix, not a permanent fix. Now, let me show you the permanent fix. Laura, if you could bring up the study slide, please. The 18 double blind studies. And Alex, if, while, while she's pulling up that slide, yeah. um, upper cervical adjustments to the top couple bones of the spine also will free the vagal nerve from uh, dysfunction. Uh, say that again, Tim. Uh, vagal nerve comes out in front of the transverse processes of the first cervical vertebra. So when patients have first cervical misalignments, they'll often have inhibition of the vagus. Okay, great, great. All right. Um, in 2001, in desperation for my wife's clinical depression that she had the first 12 years of our marriage, I discovered a mechanism that had never been discovered before. And uh, today, we had, there have been 18 double-blind university stub studies published in peer-reviewed journals. And, and, and here's a distinction here. You'll see all kinds of things that'll say, supported by 20 double-blind studies, supported by 10 double-blind studies. If you read the fine print on those, virtually none of them are about that particular thing. They're about some general thing that they're applying to their particular thing. Every one of these 18 double blind studies were done specifically and only on the intervention that I discovered in 2001. And by the way, there have not been 19 double blind studies and one of them found that it didn't work. There've been 18 total Every one of them found that it works significantly to dramatically for all of these life issues that you're seeing on the screen right now. And it does that by reducing stress, emotional stress, by healing those memories with anger and low self-worth and things like that. And, mm -hmm. and very briefly, it, this works by activating four healing centers on the body that to my knowledge had not been discovered before. One of them is right here. It's where your eyebrows would grow together if they grew together. One is in the temple area. One is uh, kind of the back bottom corner of the jawbone on both sides of the uh, head. And one is in the neck around the area of your Adam's apple. And you activate those healing centers in a particular sequence for a particular problem. And, but, but all of those issues, all the issues you see on your screen, the procedures to heal the memories that are the source of those are included in this home study program. And by the way, when I first started selling this home study program for, that has uh, all of the procedure to heal the source of these issues, 
It sold for $797. And we have sold tens of thousands of them to people all over the world with a 97% <coughs> satisfaction rate at $797 each, okay? If you wanna get this tonight, and it has a one year money back guarantee for any, a one year one money back guarantee, 365 days for any reason, no questions asked. And we almost never have a return. Usually when people do it once, they, they will not let go of it, okay? Um, so today, if you wanna get, this whole thing and, and how to heal the source of the issues you see on your screen, it's $147, not, not $797. And this is to heal the emotional side, the source of these issues, okay? And one thing I'll tell you about the, um, the two supplements that Tim had up there for the chemical and structural side, you will not find those on Amazon. Those are for professional practitioners that are licensed only. Hey, Alex, let me let me chime in on that. If you do yeah. find it on Amazon, they're oh, you do. expired and they're, well, they shouldn't be. And they're being put on there sometimes by people who are kind of going around the system. And uh, uh, you, okay. you, own, you have to be a professional and have to be trained to, to use these. And so uh, if you're getting somebody who's going around the system and you find them, they're probably expired or they're probably counterfeit. Yeah, which happens a lot on Amazon. Because, yeah. because when I tried to get these, they said these are only available to license like chiropractors yeah. and people like that. that. The general public cannot buy them. And so this is standard process you know as prices, not what you and I assign to them. So this is gonna be, should be the same everywhere. That's right, that's right, that's right. So, um, so that's the free fix, the 6912. And for $147, you can get the permanent fix for the emotional side. And here's the chemical structural fix from Dr. Adair for the stress on the, on the chemical um, structural side. So Tim, anything you wanna say before we go to Q&A? Yes, sir, I don't, uh, just one quick thing on economics. Uh, I don't know what your initial consult is, but I, I have patients who go to uh, mental health practitioners. Their first visit's often $250, $300 the first day and $150, $200 each visit after that. So it, you have this forever for the cost of one visit. Uh, in my office, my consult, my day one is, uh, is more expensive than after that. But that's essentially this conversation we had would be our adrenal uh, fatigue consultation that we tell you what not to do. You get that for free tonight. But this is what we would tell you if you had a consult with me. So essentially, you look at the, the value of what we're providing here. It's, it's a significant reduction. Yeah. And, uh, and by the way, uh, the least expensive first session with me is basically somewhere in the thousand dollar range. Okay. okay. So it's a pretty um, good value, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm giving you the quick fix for free, the permanent fix, 147. Um, the two the adrenal checklists uh, for high cortisol and adrenal fatigue, and then the right. conversation about what not to do for withdrawal. And so you guys get that no matter what you choose to do. Right. All right, so Laura, I think we're ready to go to Q and A. If we have questions, and I think we had one, a couple that were written, and Tim, I'll read those, and uh, one of us will answer. Here's the first one from anonymous: I have neuropathy on my right foot caused by a lower disc pressing on my nerves. Nothing helps the pain, tingling, burning. What can I do? Okay. Uh, that's a great question. And honestly, uh, with uh, what we would refer to as radiculopathy, I probably on an average day see six to eight of those. Uh, real complicated, but there's a muscle in the front of the leg uh, that goes from the inside of the hip to the inside of the knee called the sartorius. And so when you cross your foot over your knee to tie your shoe or put on your sock, that is a function of the sartorius. 
So if that's real easy to do on the good side, but it's impossible to do on the bad side, the sartorius is on the same circuit as the adrenal gland. So uh, the sartorius is what holds the hip in place. So you get you get a lot of chiropractors, and I, Alex, you, you know, in my office, I'll get chiropractic failures. And so these people will go 30, 40, 50 times to the chiropractor and they, they might get a day or two relief from a sacroiliac adjustment, but it won't, it won't hold. The reason it won't hold, the sartorius won't work to hold the hip in place unless the adrenal gland works. So you have to, so in my office, I do a lot of acupuncture and uh, do a lot of laser therapy. I will fix the uh, adrenal circuit with, with acupuncture. I'll do uh, a, a correction to the sartorius. I'll release the piriformis muscle in the back. I'll mobilize the, uh, the SI joint and then start them on those two nutritions. And uh, uh, if, when I was working in pro wrestling, that was the most common injury because the guys weren't overweight. They were just too big and they were constantly getting dropped and getting a disc uh, bulging and herniation. So great question, really common problem that makes up 20% of what I do every day. It's definitely uh, right in line with this adrenal fatigue thing. Um, someone asked, how do, I, how do I get the supplements? How do I purchase these things? And Laura has posted the link. Um, Laura, can they see that on the webinar chat? I know I can see it. Can they see that? Laura, can they see that link? Yes, I think they can, Alex. Okay, you should be able to yes. see the link uh, to if you'd like to get the healing code package uh, that has the processes for the emotional side. If you'd like uh, one or both of the supplements for the structural chemical side, the link is on the right of your screen under what is uh, called webinar chat. Uh, Alex, can I say yeah, one quick thing? Yeah, guys, if you can afford one of the supplements, but not both, scratch your head and say, am I, am I more sleep deprived and start there, or am I more exhausted during the day? So if you're having more trouble during the day, do Drenaman. If you're having more trouble sleeping, do the Procortisol. Uh, we, we'd, we'd like to hope that everybody could get all that they needed, but if you have to choose, choose that way. Uh, Heather asked uh, she, if this is different from uh, another program I have called Trilogy. Yes, it is. It's completely different. Uh, Tim, we have someone ask, uh, uh, well, I might be able to answer this. Uh, someone asked, can you stimulate the vagus nerve by tapping in the same area of the Mayo Clinic implant for, say, 15 mm -hmm. minutes for temporary relief? Yes, you can, but the 6912 does it, and it does it better than that. All right, and here and and if you do the six nine twelve breathing, it also increases your lung capacity, which increases oxygenation all over your body and makes you healthier and healthier the more you do it. So the six nine twelve works way better. In fact, it, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't do the tapping. That may hurt after fifteen minutes. If you well, want to, you don't want to you don't want to injure the vagus nerve. Yeah, it. right. Yeah. Right. So I would do the breathing. Uh, Veronica has asked, uh, this one's for you, Tim. My 15 year old has a curb in their spine. It's not bothering her yet, but how can I fix her? It's scoliosis. What a wonderful question. So scoliosis has a, uh, if we have a curvature in the spine, one side is too tight. One side is too loose. So it's like me and you playing tug of war. Uh, Alex has always been a wise guy. When he lets go of the rope, I'm going to fall. And that's what happens in scoliosis. One side of the spine has let go. And remember, we just talked about it with the other good question we had. Why do I have sciatica down my leg? One muscle lets go and lets the other one tighten up. And so we would muscle test which muscle has let go. And there's going to be an organ or gland association. And we strengthen that. And sometimes, Alex, if I want you to have big, beautiful biceps like that, those wrestlers you fixed, I'm going to get you to lift weights with both arms. But if you have a scoliosis, I'm only going to get you to lift the weight on that side of the spine, and I'm going to get you to stretch the other. Now, let me make one more comment. 
what we see in scoliosis is it's almost always a copper toxicity. So if you get a Google when pennies used to have copper in them, if you sniff a penny when you're lifting weights, you won't be able to lift the amount of weights if you're toxic to copper. So I use molybdenum, manganese, and magnesium to pull copper out. And I've made uh, adults an inch and a half or two inches taller by detoxifying copper. Oh, Because awesome. we get rid of the curvature so they get straight instead of, and so between the, the physical and the chemical, we get there. Right. And uh, Laura, we've had several people saying they can't see the link. Um, if you can uh, get that where people can see it, that would be great. If not, we need to give it out. Here's another question. Uh, I have bone, bone on bone pain at the knee and extending up to the hip. Also have just developed pain and swelling in the left arm where I have lymphedema that is never that has never had pain in 30 years, or they may mean never not had pain. How do I get help with all this? I'm old, but I can heal or can I heal? So uh, Alex, I'm gonna let you address the general healing that would maybe help the lymphedema with maybe, maybe a self-healing stimulation of healing with the codes. The bone on bone is actually really common. I've got lots of practice with that. So when you have bone on bone pain, you so when bone hits bone, you effervesce calcium, which is alkaline. And so when you see old, older people who get up after prolonged sitting, they'll walk like a little old person for 10 or 15 or 20 steps. But if you keep watching them, their gait will go to normal at step 25 or step 30. The reason they get normal after they get going is every muscle contraction causes a byproduct of lactic acid. And when you get enough, when you walk up steps, your legs burn, that's lactic acid. When you get enough acid into the effervescing bone on bone calcium erosion, you reach equilibrium. So what I do is I give cartilage precursors in an acidic environment. So we'll do a seminar on arthritis and do the supplementation for that. But I would tell you this, I would take two tums uh, or, a, or a really nice calcium supplement of about a thousand milligrams. And I would totally do that with a digestive acid, maybe like a tablespoonful of apple cider vinegar and about 10 ounces of water. And I would do that concoction together and watch what happens. We're gonna get them to equilibrium in the chair before they get up and walk. So they walk at step two or three, like they would at step 30. Okay, Tim, you're gonna to have to say that again, but two tums, how much apple cider? A, a thousand milligrams of calcium, tums is 1200 milligrams of calcium, that's fine. One tablespoonful of apple cider vinegar in a 10 ounce glass of water. All right, there you and go. That gives you the precursors to rebuild. And typically you'd have to pay several hundred dollars to find that out. All right. And that also helps with leg cramps, by the way. And those, those very often go together. Uh, and they also help heartburn, which goes together. Uh, Gail asked if uh, a vagus patch that I have will help with the vagus nerve. It will. We're going to talk about that another week. Um, someone says, is the breathing done? How is the breathing done? I would do through the nose and out the mouth. I do in the nose, out the mouth. Um, the link is in the webinar chat on the right of your screen. It's not in the Q&A. It's in the webinar <laughs> chat on the right of the screen. If you want to order, just, just click on that link. Um, let's see. How would I heal my trigger finger or the middle finger on my left hand? Boy, that's a general question. Tim, you got anything for that? Uh, you know what? With trigger finger, um, uh, I have a I have a doctor that I refer to for that, and he doesn't do the surgery for it. He does a needle flossing, and the recovery is three or four days instead of four or five or six weeks. And he's eighty five percent successful. So it teases the scar tissue off the tendon sheath. I will tell you this: if you guys Google and read about this, the <laughs> here we go again. Those adrenal glands. The middle finger is, is where the tonification point is in the acupuncture system to the adrenal gland. It's called the circulation sex meridian. The tonification point is the end of the middle finger. 
<laughs> and so when we're having trigger finger to the middle finger, that's sometimes the, uh, uh, the straw that broke the camel back. Uh, camel's back is adrenal fatigue. Uh, someone asked a question. If you had success with adults 13 to 18 who have ADHD and are on drugs. The college age one can't function without the drugs. He's doing well in university, but only on the drugs. Okay. okay. I'm about as ADHD as <laughs> anyone will ever be. And, and I'm also dyslexic. Okay. I finished last in my academically in my high school class, dead last. Now in graduate school, I finished second in my class with honors, okay, after I learned how my brain worked. Richard Branson, the billionaire who owns Virgin Records and Virgin Airlines is dyslexic. He calls it his superpower. And he says, the reason he calls it that is that there's no way he would be a billionaire today and, and have been able to do what he did without the dyslexia because it not only lets him think outside the box, it lets him get to the point of what box, okay? Let me tell you, I never would have discovered the solution that uh, the 18 double blind studies have been on tonight uh, that I've told you about without the dyslexia and ADHD uh, because I'm a, I'm a what box guy. I think of things other people don't think and it's not because I'm brilliant or anything. It's because I'm wired a different way. I think a different way, okay? So yes, if you get the Healing Codes program and start using it to heal the source of that ADHD and or dyslexia, yeah, they can excel without the drugs. That's exactly what I've done. Okay. Alex, I need, to, I need to comment on this chemically. And yeah, I'll go ahead. That this is, your adrenal gland matures in puberty. And so if you look at the, the PDR, uh, uh, this is, so there's a book called The Physician Desk Reference. Yep. To be transparent, it's the, hey, dummy doctor, don't do this book, okay? And the, the hey, dummy doctor, don't do this book says that when you get fully matured adrenal glands at the end of puberty by 17, 18, or some guy's 40, right, Alex? Uh, yeah. uh, when we finally get through puberty, uh, if because your adrenal gland works better after puberty, it secretes more adrenaline. Well, if you also take an amphetamine after that, then that is stepping on the accelerator twice. So that can lead to tachycardia, hyperthyroidism, insomnia, anxiety. Uh, so the don't screw up dummy doctor book says don't do that. But 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 then there's a there's a asterisk and says, well, if you're evaluated by a neuropsychiatrist and they think that you should do it, basically, if you don't really know what the solution is and you're solving the symptoms, do it anyway. Well, I will tell you this, I totally duck attention deficit disorder. Alex, I'm not dyslexic, but you may not be the most attention hyperactive disorder guy <laughs> on the webinar tonight. Um, but here's what I found. It, before I knew what I did uh, learn in my doctorate, postdoctorate work, uh, I found that I couldn't remember one thing but I can remember eight or nine. So I majored in pre-medicine and chemistry and mathematics, and I did my four-year degree in three. As long as you push me to the wall, you hyper-stimulate me and you make me secrete adrenaline, I can focus. I can remember nine things. I can't remember one. So that is a, so this person thinks that they have a problem. They probably have a gift, <laughs> uh, but I don't try to fix getting off the medications in the winter because I, I, I'm not successful. I lose every time I fight that fight. So I don't fight that fight in the winter. I fight that fight in the summer. I have to have them be able to sleep to 9 a.m. six weeks in a row. And when they can sleep to 9 a.m. six weeks in a row, they can take my adrenaline and they can take my procortisol. They can go on a low carb diet. I can get their adrenal glands strong enough that it secretes adrenaline and they can focus without an amphetamine, but I got to do it in the warm part of the year. I can't, I never win that fight in the winter. And I don't even like to fight that fight uh, in the school year. I like to fight that fight in the summer. So in other words, we're coming into the time that you can fight that fight. Yeah, another 45 days when school's out uh, and we can get that adrenal repair. It's a fantastic time to start to shift gears. All right. 
Okay, uh, Laura, we've also been asked, is there uh, going to be a replay? These are all going to be posted. We said that at the first, so that if you've missed the segment that has the issue you need to know about, and we'll be talking about a different issue every week, and we'll be bringing in expert guests as well, you can go back and find those. But Laura, how do they find the uh, where it's posted? Can you put a link over there on the right in the webinar chat that is where the the replays are going to be posted, or do we need to send an email out that uh, tells them that? So, um, and Veronica has asked, um, there's a Healing Codes 1 and a Healing Codes 2. Tonight, I'm just talking about one, and that's the one I would get. It's the original. It deals with 485 different issues related to stress and gives you the custom procedure to heal the source of all of them. Is that it? 485. Yeah. Um, all right. So, Tim, that is all the questions we have. Do you have any final parting comments? Brother, you know what? Um, here's I'm going to make a promise for next week. I intended to have a fantastic joke to share with everybody. And uh, I have failed you, but I won't fail you next week. I'll have a good one for next week. Well, Tim, I need you to have some illustrations. I mean, you, you know, people need some illustrations on how to understand. I'm, I'm kidding. You gave like 20 illustrations. I'm uh, kidding. Uh, I like the chainsaw one. But uh, okay, now. Um, Laura has posted over on the right, all the recordings will be uploaded to the YouTube channel. You can subscribe with the link below. So that uh, for free, there's no charge for that. And then you also have the link over on the right. If you wanna order one of the products, the uh, free one I gave you, I would try immediately as soon as we end the call. So you'll your stress will go down 50% or more and you'll sleep better tonight, okay? Um, so, okay, so next week will be a completely different issue and Tim will address the structural chemical. I will address the emotional, mental, spiritual. Okay, um, Laura, let's leave them with the Dr. Axe video, okay? Um, I, I, want, I want you guys to know that I could have chosen a lot of different chiropractors to do this with. I know uh, the people who are considered the top chiropractors in the world, past and present. I consider Dr. Tim the top practicing chiropractor in the world today. And there are many other people that do as well. And I was either going to do it with him or I was not going to do it. But just to kind of validate that, this is what the current most well-known popular chiropractor in the world, Dr. Josh Axe, says about what I discovered and I'm offering to you tonight at about 75% uh, less than we charge for years for the same thing. That's that Healing Codes package. So thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and if you wanna watch what Josh has to say, it's just like a minute long. And I hope we will see you next week. Tim, I love you. Thank you. And anything else you want to say? And then we'll let Dr. Axe. Uh, Brother, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to do this with you. And uh, I, I'm, I'm going to try to carry my weight. And I look forward to learning from you. And uh, uh, I love you and I appreciate you. And I'm, I'm proud of you. And uh, I think it's phenomenal what you're sharing with everybody. All right. So here's Dr. Axe to talk us out. And we will see you next week. If you missed any of it, go uh, listen to the replay. And if you need uh, to heal the emotional, get the healing codes. If you need to heal the structural and physical, get Dr. Uh, Adair's supplements that you really can't get legally anywhere but from a professional. And here's what Dr. Axe has to say. Hope to see you next week. They can't hear it, Laura. No sound. Still no sound.
It's just week one hiccups. Please forgive us. Yeah, sorry for the week one technical stuff. And if we can't get it, we'll show it next time, Laura. If you can, go ahead. You think she's secreting adrenaline right now? <laughs> Probably. Uh, she needs some of that adrenaline. <laughs> yes, I think we need to wait for next time, Alex. Okay, well, we'll, yeah. we'll show it to you next week. All right. God bless everybody. Uh, have a wonderful week. Thank you, Tim. We'll we'll hope to see you next week. Hey, please spread the word. Uh, we're here to help with any kind of pain. We're going to build the largest library in the world of practical solutions, some free, some very inexpensive compared to the number one cause of bankruptcy. Um, so we're here for you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good night. Uh, good night.